Welcome back. So, today we're making something um, kind of special to me. This is the company logo for the company that I work for. Uh, Red Storm Entertainment. The lightning bolt. The lightning bolt has... <laughs> has struck again! Uh, sorry. The, the lightning bolt uh, was designed by the head of the company, and very recently... Uh, we had a bit of a logo contest to see uh, who could make a logo for a t-shirt. I don't make t-shirt logos. Much better people, people much better at making t-shirt sort of designs, like graphic design, they did that. Uh, I did something that literally couldn't win a t-shirt contest, but I did enjoy doing it. And it made some fun objects uh, coming out of it. So, with much difficulty and strife, <laughs> I am cutting this out with a jeweler saw, and I don't have as much experience with this as I do just cutting a straight line. So, this first one's a little rough, not gonna lie. Uh, some things that I learned along the way, uh, again, not on the first logo, but on the second and third. Uh, I learned to cut literally as close to that line as you can possibly get it. Uh, that is one of the most important things when you're cutting things out. And something else to do, which I do do, haha, I keep my hands and my fingers away from that blade because it is stupid easy to accidentally uh, cut yourself. And if this thing can cut copper, it can cut fingies, and you need those. I especially need those because I work for a company that kind of needs me to have hands. Um, so, lots of slapping, lots of cutting later. I do a terrible job and have to do a lot of hand file work, which is fun. I do like hand filing. This is a lot. <laughs> <clears throat> and while it is a lot, uh, hopefully 1,200 times speed is gives you an idea of just, just how quickly it, it can go, but it feels like it takes forever. If you cut much closer to the lines, this is an hour's job instead of like the two hours that it took me to get all this cut and cleaned up and pretty. And another fun artifact of video editing, I am not a video editor, I am an animator. Uh, when you speed up too fast, all of the audio gets completely out of sync with uh, what is happening on the screen. Thanks DaVinci Resolve. Uh, anyway. So every surface gets uh, cut, cleaned up, filed down made to look as pretty as I can get it. Uh, I, Along the way, I half destroyed the, uh, the template, so that could have been much better, but it wasn't. The back of the copper is coated in this sort of green stuff. Now it is not. And not too shabby, but we are going to do something that emphasizes all of the little details that I got kind of not right uh, as we continue. <laughs> Jam for the edge down a bit. Play with some texture. It's always fun to play with texture. And I, I've been looking for an excuse to use this hammer just in my daily life. Uh, I decided to keep the logo itself, or the, uh, the bolt clean and just a few errant strikes managed to make it onto the bolt, but uh, I'm pretty satisfied with that look. So I'm going to clean it off with acetone. Acetone or denatured alcohol. I'm using acetone without gloves. That is ill-advised. Don't do that. <laughs> so clean it off real good and then put, um, put a, um, an etchant on it and let it sit. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so, I opted for a plastic baggie, and it worked amazing. I've never had the etchant work this well. I will 
dip things in it from now on. I'll never do it. <laughs> I'll never do it by dabs again. And at also at 1200 speed, you can see the slow drooping of a plastic bag. This is very high speed. So I want to knock back some of it. I just want it to look a little bit more antique. That was my goal. I am severely impressed by it. The, the, the function of the acid or etchant, what have you. Also, I'm not intentionally doing this to my voice. Uh, I have strained it and it is yelling at me. <laughs> so just knocking it back with some steel wool. Uh, I, I, I like the effect that it gives. Uh, I could go for, I could go for a deeper texture because I do like it when, when you see like the darks stay like sort of lower and the highlights like pop more, but I do like the way that this ended up. Certainly not clean copper and definitely not like penny copper, copper from a penny. Anyway, I have a bandsaw now. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I make it. I make it eat uh, hardwood and make little slabs of things. And at Mach nine, I am making sort of templates for the inlays. I couldn't go off the pattern because I deformed it and didn't follow it perfectly. And something else I've learned with the bandsaw sense is to cut as closely to the lines as possible. Who knew? I'm being very careful with my fingers. Again, this is not a channel where I, I will ever show myself being severely injured. And I will, um, I honestly like, I like my hands. They're good hands. They're decent hands. They're okay hands. They work, they're fine. Stupid hands. So, very careful, methodical cutting. Uh, because it does come straight to the line, uh, or these these little blue tape templates get so, so... Like, they're, they're very close, if not, like, precise to the point where you have to follow it, and if you don't follow it, you're... You're going to be too loose, or you can't get it in there, or it's going to be um, very noticeable. Inlays are hard. That's what I learned. Inlays are very difficult. Especially the way that I'm doing them. <laughs> Any excuse to use a very expensive grinder? Yep. I would, I would not do anything silly, but I'm pretty sure I could clean my teeth with it if I tried hard enough. I'm going at low speeds with a relatively high grit belt. Uh, and after all of this, I have to clean up so much dust because I'm scared to death of a uh, some sort of combustion via wind or like a spark after grinding a knife. It's just it has made me more clean, which I think is a good thing. Left all of this in real time, I believe. The, the other option, instead of using a big old grinder, would have been cut very close to the lines and hand file. And I cut out all of the hand filing that I did on this wood because it was a lot. It was a lot, and I don't wish that on any of you. <laughs> so, skip forward uh, maybe two and a half, three hours. Peel the tape off. See sort of how it's going to look and it's finality when it's complete that's what humans say they say when it's complete not in its finality good job um yeah so it's pretty 
I like it. It is a very unique object as far as objects that I've made are concerned. Uh, I'm using water thin super glue, and since it peeked its head over the uh, over onto the wood, that's just what it's finished with now. <laughs> Easy as that. And I'm gluing, uh, I have it stuck to the back side of painter's tape just to make it sort of like seal to the bottom and not let super glue just go everywhere. It's looking pretty good. Uh, from here, you can kind of see the wood pieces aren't uniform. The It looks very rustic. Like you might find this in... You might find this in a hundred years and be like, oh, neat. <laughs> if, if this lasts a hundred years, I will be very happy and somebody will be mildly confused. But that is Logo One done. Uh, it is finished with super glue, but I decide to use some uh, micro wax, micro crystalline wax. I already forgot the name of this. Renaissance Wax. That's it. <laughs> and this is, this is to protect the copper and the finish that I have on it, as well as uh, it, it kind of works its way into like really small scratches and evens out the, the sort of sheen that it has. It can also be buffed a little bit. So that's, that's pretty neat. But yeah, that's that one, which is neat. Uh, I do make a second one. I make it off camera, and it takes uh, a fifth of the time. So, oh man, I seeing the back of it makes me wish that I had done one that was just flush and clean lines, no texture. And then I decide, instead of inlays, I'm going to do resin. This is a resin channel now, uh, and if you're okay with that, cool. If you're not okay with that, that's fine. You are, you are correct in liking things that you would like to like. Uh, so I get the only pearlescent powder that I have that is red storm colored. Uh, there's a very specific color to the lightning bolt, and I don't know it by heart, but it is an important color, and it is an important logo. Somebody, not going to name names, forgot to hit record when pouring resin into the logo. Uh, again, not naming names, me. Um, forgot. And then I did it again. <laughs> not yet, but uh, I have a lot of extra resin that I mixed. And honestly, either it's going bad or I mixed it poorly because this is... Um, there's there's a just it's a little soft. It ends up a little soft. Spoilers, I know. Uh, this is an old mold for Mr. Dumpling, and this is the better mold for Mr. Dumpling that I made a long time ago. And it makes me want to make another Mr. Dumpling. I love how the resin just sort of continues to move. It's very neat. Ta -da. So, it's been about 24 hours. The resin's as cured as it's going to get. It's still a little soft, which is not customary. Uh, but it is hard enough that it's not like, it's not changing shape. It's just a little soft. This little Zelda shield I made for an overpour mold is long past its due. Plenty of bubbles, not worth, not worth putting anything into it anymore. And this cutaway mold was designed poorly by me, but it does work. This non-cutaway mold is not designed poorly by me. It's as simple as it gets, and I like it. I learned from uh, Radioactive Resin Art that you can just make cool sounding videos of un uh, taking things out of molds. Who knew? 
So, uh, on to the logo. Uh, I'm just cleaning up the edges on this thing with the grinder. The grinder is not used again. This all has to be done by hand. And copper is sharp even when you chamfer the edges. So the solution for holding it, because just a very small amount of sanding put just about put a hole in my thumb. So blue painter's tape on the back, blue painter's tape on a board, and now I have a handle with which I can hand sand. I sprayed it with a little activator. And I am wet sanding with... Um, it's basically Windex. It's just glass cleaner. Uh, it's not water, so... I don't think that water really cares. I think water would have been fine for this. It's just, it was on hand. Uh, but this this uh, painter's tape and super glue thing, the super glue is only glued to the painter's tape. The adhesive on the painter's tape is just strong enough that that doesn't matter. And when you go to peel and separate them apart, it's not too bad. So I take it up to 3,000 grit. <laughs> just like that. Skipping through as much hand sanding as possible. But you get to see, it's just coming off the painter's tape and it works out pretty nicely uh, I do do both sides and <laughs> nice uh, <laughs> uh, it's not entirely necessary but it was necessary I had to do it one thing that I regret is not filling in those teeny tiny bubbles with super glue before I started this and also not having a little, like, tiny nozzle for my super glue because it's, um, it, it is obvious when you use super glue to fill on the resin as it is. So I got it polished with, uh, mother's polish as best as I can get it. My brain doesn't work because I forgot that I have micro mesh, but uh, I finish it with Renaissance wax as well. Seals in the copper, seals in the flavor, and it evens out the scratches just a little bit. And so you you can see the mythical second, not recorded, uh, Red Storm logo. The first one, up close and personal. It's rustic. It's got character. It's got that little little divot in there. The back is super cool. And I would I still might make another one just for me. Who knows? These are all just for me. <laughs> Nobody asked me to do this. Uh, except for the logo contest, but it also these would not make good t-shirts. The one on the far right, maybe. So, really quickly, when you do something multiple times you get better at it. This was try two. Try three, <clears throat> sorry, my voice cracked. Try three would be even better, but this is an honest to God level up. I still see little flaws. I st still see some saw marks, but it is 100% better than the first try. And the cutout on this one was even better than the last one. It still has some flaws. It's not perfect, but it's nice. And I feel like I learned a lot from doing it. Uh, the back, I did not. I did, the back, I put super glue on, and you can see the difference in sheen between the super glue and the resin. So that's just an interesting artifact. Also, my hands are sweaty, and you could see condensation evaporating. Yeah, that is just about it. Thank you for watching. Uh, go play some some games that Redstorm's put out. We've put out some really cool stuff. We worked on uh, The Division, Star Trek, VR, um, Werewolves Within. That's a fun one. Good Lord. Uh, and go all the way back to, you know what? Go all the way back to Ghost Recon. Ghost Recon and Rainbow Six. Just do it. This is not Nat. Nobody's paying me. <laughs> Mr. Dumpling, uh, get me out of here. Thank you for watching. 
a bye bye. I sanded his butt.